In this video, I'm going to go over my bank reconciliation template. And in this template, you can categorize your transactions, which will make it easier to automatically and manually reconcile them as well. So to get started, I'm going to go to the bank tab where I have some sample transactions here. I've got checks, deposits, and wire transfers. And so I want to create rules to correctly categorize these transactions. And notice my checks start with a prefix of CK, a space, and then a series of numbers. So I'm going to the setup tab. In order to category, I'm going to enter the word checks. The identifier is going to be CK space. And the reason I'm including the space is just to make it as unique as possible to help avoid any false positives. And so if I go to the bank tab now, you'll notice it's categorized the transactions correctly as checks. But I want to populate this key field as well, which is important for, for reconciling the transactions. So for the key, it's effectively the check number. So I can use the alphanumeric string that comes after the identifier, the numbers, or the letters that come after. Or I can just use the date if there's nothing else. But I'm going to use the numbers here. If we go to the bank tab, you'll see that for my key, it's pulled 001122. And I want to get rid of those leading zeros. So I'm going to go back to the setup tab. There's two other fields here. But one for the length of the key, if I know exactly how long I want it to be. And also one for the gap, which is if I don't want to start pulling the numbers that come immediately after the identifier. So because I wanted to skip the first two numbers that, that occur after, I'm going to set the gap to 2. I go back to the bank tab now, and now it's set my key as 1122. Because now it's found the identifier of CK space, skipped over the next two letters or numbers, and then pull the numbers afterwards, which pulls 1122. And now it's reconciled the item. It doesn't show as outstanding anymore. And the reason for that is on the previous outstanding items, there's a check for 1122, same amount, same key, same category. So all those things need to need to match in order for the for the spreadsheet to to say that they're reconciled. Because you notice before before I updated the key there wasn't a match. So that's why setting up the key is important, just to make sure that you know you don't get those false positives, to make sure that everything is a match, because the spreadsheet isn't going to make any guesses for you. It needs all that stuff to, to match. And so what I'm going to do now is set up rules for the deposits and the wire transfers. So for the category, I'm going to set up deposits. Identifier is just going to be the word deposit. And for the key, I'm just going to use the date, just because I don't have anything else to, that I can use here. And so same thing for a wire transfer. And again, uh, this really depends on... Oh, I should pluralize that. Uh, this really depends on your financial institution or your accounting software that you use, because obviously the description is going to vary from one to the other. And that's why I've just used a, a date for the key for the deposits and the wire transfers. But you can use something a bit more complex depending on what shows up on your statements. On the book tab, you'll notice that the wire transfers and deposits have already been categorized. But you'll notice my check numbers have a different prefix. And so I need to create a separate rule for those. I go back to the setup tab, and under checks, I'm going to put C number sign. And if I go back to the book tab, you'll see now it's correctly pulled, pulled, pulled those transactions and categorized them as checks. And I want to set up the key as well, using the numbers after the identifier. But now the problem is, under the key, I've got trailing zeros this time. So I want to get rid of those. If I go back to the setup tab, I... I specify a length of the key of four digits long. I don't need anything for the gap because I'm pulling immediately after the identifier. And now you'll see for the key, it returns 2323. Three, three. It's gotten rid of, the, rid of those trailing zeros. And now again, it's found a match on my bank tab this time for another check of 2323. Three, three. Same amount, same category, and same key. And so, that's the benefit of you know setting up these categories and these keys is it makes it easier to automatically reconcile transactions, but you can also manually uh, reconcile transactions as well. There's an option for a manual override here where if I enter an X, it's going to mark it as reconciled. Now the downside of this though is if you're doing it this way, you know you if you do it on the book side, you have to remember to do it on the bank side and or the previous outstanding items to make sure there's a match. However, there's there's one other way that you could do it. I've set up a tool called the Reconciler. And if I select the 
the transaction here. If I hit Control Shift X, it's going to pull up all the other transactions on the previous outstanding items, and as well as from, in this case, the the book tab, as to what could possibly match up to this five thousand dollar credit on the bank side. And so you'll notice on the previous tab, there's a five thousand dollar item. So if I select that. This button will highlight green and I can just click it and it'll match these transactions together. However, it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one fit. There could be multiple transactions that make up this deposit. So on the book tab, I've got two deposits, one for $1,000, one for $4,000. Now if I combine these, notice if I select just one, the button is not green anymore. But if I select both of them, now it's highlighted green because now they're adding up to $5,000. And so I can match these up. So I can have two or more transactions reconcile to just one transaction here. So if I hit match selections, hit yes. Now what it's done is it's just put an X in the override section, but it's done it on both sides. So it's as if you were to manually reconcile them. But the benefit of using that reconciler function is it's going to show you all the other categories and all the other transactions that you could match it up to rather than having to go and do it manually. Another one I want to look at it is this wire transfer for $5,000. I'm going to hit Control shift x again, and now it shows me you know, an amount on the previous tab and two amounts on the current. Now one note I'm just going to make on the amount field is this positive or negative does not indicate whether it's a debit or a credit. It just means whether it's money coming in or money coming out. So positive $3,000 means it was a wire transfer deposited into your account, whereas a negative $5,000 indicates that it was money leaving your account, so a negative. So on the book tab, a credit of $5,000 means minus $5,000 leaving your account. So you'd want to match it up to this one because even though it's both are technically you know, negatives, on the, on the book tab, money leaving your account is going to be showing up as a credit. Whereas on the bank side, it's going to be a debit. And that's why the amounts matched here, once a credit and once a debit, because it depends on which point of view you're looking at. So to match these, I'm going to hit the match button, hit yes. And again, it's put an X in the previous outstanding items as well. It's reconciled it there as well. So that's how you, know, you can use that tool to, to match up whatever transactions um, you can find without having to manually go through one by one. You know, if I wanted to see if there's any deposits I can match up, I hit Control Shift X, and it's going to show me what what other categories are out there that I can match this to. And if there's nothing, then you know, won't let me reconcile it unless it's a match. So I've done all that I can as far as reconciling goes. I'm going to go to the Reconciliation tab now and hit the Reconcile button. And it's going to ask me if my bank balance is zero. I'm going to say no. It's going to ask me to enter an amount. And I hit one thousand dollars. Bank balance. I'm going to oh book balance. I'm going to say is zero. And now what it's done is it's populated my outstanding items based on the categories, so the checks that I was saying, deposits, and the wire transfers. So you'll see that I'm out by about twenty twenty four. So I'm just going to cheat, and I'm just going to put that in the ending book balance here, and hit reconcile again. And that will change it to green, showing that it's reconciled. So, so the reconciliation will group it based on the categories that you've got. There's a couple other buttons. One is to clear the data and just wipe everything out completely. And then there's also a new month button. So once you're done the reconciliation, you can hit save and then hit the new month button. And what it's going to do, it's going to confirm it here. It's going to clear the bank and the book data. And then it's going to copy the outstanding items to the previous outstanding items just so your your current outstanding becomes next month's previous outstanding so I'm gonna hit yes and now what it's gonna do so it's wiped out my reconciliation my bank is gone my book is gone my previous outstanding items now they include now the old items that I didn't match up and it still includes you know this deposit of five thousand that I had that I didn't that I'm still carrying forward, but it includes the, the new items that I was saying as well. So it uh, it basically creates the, clears up the new uh, 
new reconciliation for you so you can start fresh and put in the next month's month's data in. So that's a that's a summary of the template and um, hope you find it useful and uh, thanks for watching.